today we are going to talk about treatment of angina pectoris in treatment of angina pectoris three main drugs are used first is the nitrate second is the beta blocker and third is the calcium channel blocker in the treatment of angina as i told you three main drugs first is the nitrate second is the beta blocker and third is the calcium channel blocker this nitrate predominantly acts on the vein it is a veno dilator so it will going to reduce the it will going to reduce the preload it will going to reduce the preload then beta blockers they particularly act on the heart so they reduce the heart rate they reduce the force of contraction they reduce the atrioventricular conduction and that's how they reduce the cardiac workload and calcium channel blockers they are the arterio dilator so they decrease the afterload or total peripheral resistance and by doing all this they decrease the workload of the heart and that's how they relieve the pain in angina okay now we'll see the nitrates what is the mechanism of action of nitrates at a molecular level what is the mechanism of action of nitrates at a molecular level organic nitrates they release no nitric oxide organic nitrate they release no and that nitric oxide transported into the vascular endothelium it crosses vascular endothelium when organic nitrates releases no that is the nitric oxide it crosses vascular endothelium and that no helps in conversion of gtp to the cyclic gmp with the help of gonilyl cyclase with the help of gonilyl cyclase gtp is converted into cyclic gmp nitric oxide helps in conversion of gtp to cyclic gmp the cyclic gmp is a secondary messenger it decreases by its inhibiting nature it decreases free cytosolic calcium and by decreasing free cytosolic calcium there is a relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle there is a relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle or simply we can say that there is a vasodilatation it it causes vasodilatation particularly venodilatation how come by decreasing free cytosolic calcium how come there is a decrease in the free cytosolic calcium in the vascular smooth muscle because there is a formation of cyclic gmp which is inhibitory in nature which decreases the free cytosolic calcium how come cyclic gmp is formed with the help of gonilyl cyclase the gtp is converted into cyclic gmp now why there is a formation of cyclic gmp because there is a release of there is a release of no or nitric oxide from the organic nitrate which crosses vascular endothelium it reaches to the vascular smooth muscle cell it converts gtp to cyclic gmp with the help of gonilyl cyclase that cyclic gmp will decrease the free cytosolic calcium and that causes the relaxation of the vascular smooth muscle or vasodilatation now what are the pharmacological actions what are the pharmacological actions of nitrate how it increases oxygen supply means as we know this nitrate will cause vasodilatation so it also causes coronary artery dilatation it causes the dilatation of the coronary artery and because of that there is a decrease coronary artery bed resistance and that's why increase coronary blood flow and increase oxygen supply to the heart muscle what does it do there is a coronary artery dilatation and because of that decrease coronary bed resistance coronary bed resistance will decrease increases the coronary blood flow it increases the oxygen supply blood flow to the heart muscle then by reduction in the peripheral resistance secondary to the dilatation of the aorta 
whenever the aorta get dilated dilatation of the aorta reduction in the peripheral resistance that will reduce the blood pressure that will reduce the afterload that reduces the workload on the heart and that's how it decreases the oxygen consumption how come oxygen consumption is decreased by decreasing the workload of the heart how come workload is decreased by decreasing the afterload how come afterload is decreased by decreasing the blood pressure and how come blood pressure is decreased by doing the dilatation of aorta or by reducing the peripheral resistance now how will you decrease the oxygen consumption how will you decrease the oxygen consumption by decreasing the workload by decreasing the preload by decreasing the left ventricular volume and how come this left ventricular volume will decrease by re reduce venous return to the heart and this reduce venous return is because of dilatation of the vents vents there is a veno dilatation so veno dilatation or dilatation of the vents because of that there is a decrease venous return to the heart there is a decrease end left ventricular volume or there is a decrease end diastolic volume or decreases preload decreases workload on the heart decrease oxygen consumption decrease oxygen consumption and that's how the pain is relieved in the angina now what are the main pharmacological effects of nitrate what are the main pharmacological effects it causes the dilatation of the coronary artery it causes the dilatation of the coronary artery it reduces the afterload by reducing peripheral artery resistance it reduces or decreases the preload by reducing the venous return so it causes three actions first dilatation of the coronary artery second thing reduction in the peripheral arterial resistance so decreases the afterload and it reduces the venous return so it reduces the preload also now nitrates or organic nitrate pharmacokinetic properties they are organic nitrates are lipid soluble and they are very well absorbed from the buccal mucosa intestine and skin organic nitrates are lipid soluble they are very well absorbed from the buccal mucosa intestine and skin and that's why this nitroglycerin or triglyceride nitrate they are available as a sublingual tablet why because it is very well absorbed from the buccal mucosa it is also available in the oral formulation because it will get absorbed from the intestine also and it is also available in the form of transdermal patch because it is well absorbed from the skin also when it is ingested orally when it is given orally all except isosorbide mononitrate what is this isosorbide mononitrate it undergoes extensive and variable first pass metabolism in the liver and they will get rapidly denitrated by the glutathione reductase and mitochondrial aldehyde reduct aldehyde dehydrogenase so when it is given orally all except monosorbide mononitrate isosorbide mononitrate they undergo extensive first pass metabolism and that's why these nitrates or glycerol trinitrate or nitroglycerin it is given via sublingual route or sublingual tablet which bypasses first pass metabolism it will get absorbed directly into the systemic circulation to the sublingual veins now different preparations that we use for different clinical conditions as we told sublingual glycerol trinitrate or nitroglycerin it is used for the rapid relief of angina acute attack of angina whenever there is a acute attack of angina we use the sublingual glycerol trinitrate it there is a bypasses first pass effect in the liver low bioavailability and we can use this sublingual tablet in emergency or you can go for the iv administration of nitrate when iv administration when there is a continuous titration is necessary and when continuous titration is necessary in the pre infarction phase or in unstable angina or in acute heart failure or it is also available in the slow release transdermal or buccal preparation so it will provide constant stable therapeutic level of nitroglycerin for the prevention of angina it is used for the prophylactic purpose 
slow release transdermal buccal preparations now we have also the longer acting oral isosorbide dinitrate sorbitrate that you all know it is used for the long term management of angina it is used for the long term management of the angina inhaled nitric oxide very short half life effect on the pulmonary vasculature so all these are the different preparations now as we know it's a veno dilator arterio dilator coronary artery dilator so what will be the adverse effects because of vasodilatation there is a throbbing headache there is a throbbing headache there is a flushing of face dizziness especially at the beginning of the treatment there is a dizziness flushing of the face because of cutaneous vasodilatation there is a throbbing headache and there is a postural hypotension why because there is a pulling of blood in the dependent parts of the body why there is a postural hypotension because there is a pulling of blood in the dependent parts of the body it also causes palpitation dizziness weakness syncope all these are the adverse effects of the nitrates and all adverse effects are because of vasodilatation now where we can use these nitrates in the treatment of angina pectoris treatment or prevention of the acute attack whenever there is a acute attack of angina you can directly go for the nitroglycerin via sublingual route or amyl nitrate via inhalant route pain is relieved and protection lasts for 30 to 40 minutes patient can survive for next 30 to 40 minute because there is a vasodilatation and the pain will be relieved if you are using for the chronic prophylaxis nitroglycerin is available orally transdermally or other oral preparations like sorbitrate is also available now main mechanism in the anti anginal effects what are the main mechanism in exertional angina decrease oxygen demand decrease myocardial oxygen demand in exertional angina or acute angina or typical angina or stable angina in the variant angina increase myocardial oxygen supply they are not the treatment of choice in the variant angina calcium channel blockers are given now in unstable angina the main mechanism is still uncertain but in that case we have to decrease the myocardial oxygen demand we have to increase the myocardial oxygen supply decrease platelet aggregation by giving the antiplatelet anticoagulant all might contribute to the therapeutic efficacy now when we are using all these drugs nitrate and high doses it may lead to reflex tachycardia or there is a reflex increase in the cardiac contractility or there is a reflex tachycardia or there is a reflex increase in the cardiac contractility now where we are using this nitrate therapeutic uses we are using in the congestive cardiac failure myocardial infarction esophageal spasm biliary colic cyanide poisoning these are the therapeutic uses of nitrates mainly it is used in the treatment of ischemic heart disease angina but apart from that it is also used in congestive cardiac failure because it decreases preload and afterload it also uses in the myocardial infarction because it relieves the chest pain it relieves the chest pain so this is all about the nitrates